domain events and integration events. You've probably heard of them before, but do you know what is the actual difference between domain events and integration events? Domain events, as the name suggests, represent something that occurred in your domain layer. You can see the domain event base class here, and all it contains is an ID property so that we can identify this domain event instance and it also inherits from iNotification, which is coming from Mediator, so that we can easily publish it using Mediator. The base class itself has no meaning, so let's take a look at a real domain event. We're going to look at the order created domain event. Now this one actually represents something that happened in our domain. In this case, it is the fact that an order was created. So this is an event that occurs when we create a new order in our system, and it originates from the domain layer. You will notice that this event also contains the order ID of the order that was just created, and we are also using a strongly typed order ID instead of a simple GUID value, because we are still in the domain layer and we are working with domain events, so it makes sense to be using domain concepts. In this case, it is the strongly typed ID. So we have our domain event, but what do we do with it? In the entity base class, we store a collection of domain events inside of a list and we expose a method inside of the entity for raising a domain event. In the order class, which implements the entity base class, we have a static factory method for creating a new order and inside of this method, we raise the order created domain event, which gets appended to the list of domain events on this order. After the domain event is raised, we need to publish it somehow. So inside of the application DB context, we override the save changes method and implement the logic for publishing our domain events after we have persisted the changes in the database. So it is at this point that the domain event, for example, the order created domain event is published. Now, if we publish an event, we also need a respective handler. So in this case, we have the order created domain event handler, and it implements the iNotification handler interface and handles the order created domain event. Now, you'll notice something interesting here. The order created domain event handler is injecting an iBus instance, and it is publishing an order created event. Before we tackle this new event type, let's first recap what I just talked about. This is a diagram of our domain layer, and inside of it we have three distinct aggregates, the orders, products, and customers aggregates. They are all part of our domain layer, and we can say they all belong to the same bounded context. A bounded context represents a boundary within a domain model where a particular domain model applies. In this case, this is our domain model, and it only applies inside of this bounded context. Now, when we create a domain event, for example, the order created domain event, we only want to publish it inside of this bounded context. Anyone that is interested in the order created domain event can subscribe to this domain event and handle it accordingly and perform the logic that is necessary. The important thing here is that the domain event is not allowed to leave our bounded context, which is why it's called a domain event and why we also give ourselves the freedom to use domain-specific types as parts of our domain event. If you also paid attention so far, you would notice that our domain event did not touch any external systems. It was published and handled in memory in the same process where our application is running. Now here we have the order created event, and this is actually an integration event. I'm going to rename it to be more explicit about this. So this is the order created event integration event. This event represents the same fact, which is that the order was created with the difference that it is allowed to leave our bounded context and other bounded contexts in our system are allowed to subscribe to this integration event. In this case, we are publishing the integration event to a message bus, which is RabbitMQ under the hood, and other applications can subscribe to this integration event and handle it as they deem necessary. Apart from the difference in the naming convention, where this is a domain event and this is an integration event, the integration event is only allowed to use primitive types, which is why we are passing in the GUID value for the order ID 
and not the strongly typed order ID value which we had in our domain event. If we take a high level view of our system, this is the boundary of our bounded context and any integration events that are raised inside of our application get published to the event path so that other systems or other bounded contexts can subscribe to them and then perform what's required to handle this integration event correctly. Integration events represent the public API of your system, so it makes sense to introduce a separate project that is going to hold only integration events and you can distribute this project among your teams as a NuGet package so everyone is aware which integration events are available in which system or bounded context. This is also common in a modular monolith architecture which I'm planning to talk about in some future videos. So let's introduce a project that is going to hold our integration events. It's going to be a class library and I'm going to name it integration events. We're going to make it a .NET 7 project now that I have the integration events project, I want to move the order created integration event inside of this project, but I first have to clean up the events that I already have. So I'm going to move all of them into separate files so that I can move the order created integration event outside of this project. So the one that's remaining is the create order payment request. And now that the order created integration event is a standalone file, I can move it into the integration events project. It would probably also make sense to update the namespace here so that it's integration events. And I need to introduce a reference from my application project to the integration events project so that my order created domain event handler is able to compile properly. So now we have proper separation between our domain events and integration events. And the order created integration event is part of our integration events project, which can be distributed as the public API of our system. I also asked a question on my channel, which type of event is more appropriate in this situation? And the use case is you want to inform the payment service that an order was canceled. Which kind of event would you publish in this situation? Is it a domain event or an integration event? 69% of you voted for publishing an integration event in this situation and I agree that this is the more correct answer. The initial use case is a little fuzzy on purpose and it's missing some important contextual information. For example, is the payment service an actually separate service that is part of a different bounded context? In any case, I think most of you understood the point of this exercise. You should now have a good understanding of the differences between domain events and integration events. Thanks for watching. I think you'll enjoy this video next. And until next time, stay awesome.